All right, part two, folks. Uh, we are on part two, New Hunter Church of Christ. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for letting me know that the tape stopped. It was very nice of you, yes, sweetie. Appreciate that. I would have kept going and didn't even look back. So anyway, we were talking about where we have to, I have to paraphrase. I'm not going to go through all of it. But as we said, we said, avoid worldly allurements like, you know, sex and all that stuff. Because remember, God has something more greater for you that he can offer you for your soul so you can have eternal life. And that's what you want more over than what this world has to offer. Because this world has nothing compared to what God's got to wait for you. That's true. You can bank on that. All right? Now, you must commit and press on, like it says in Luke 9.62. So let's go to Luke 9.62. Okay, and that says this. And Jesus replied, No one who uh, puts a hand to the plow without looking back is fit for service in doing the work of the kingdom of God. And that's basically if you can't do it, or you feel like it's too much pressure, which God doesn't give you any pressure, it's an open-end arrangement. You know, God just says, hey, you come to me when you call on my name. You know, every time people called on their name, they were saved according to the Bible. It wasn't God coming to them, or you were pre-elected garbage. You know, some people believe that. I'm not saying nothing about nobody here. I'm just saying it's what people believe in general. But it is true. You're not determined what you yet you are saved before you're saved. That is just garbage and it's from hell. How can you be saved if you have not come to know God first? How does that work? It doesn't. God has to come to you by you praying to him, kids, first. And then he comes to you. And then that's how you get to know him intimately. Because he comes and communicates to you. And first you had to call out to him. God, I need your help. God, I want you now. God, I need your help because I need you. Then he comes to you. He comes into your soul when you get baptized in him. See, that's how it works. All right, so if a song helps, we'll do it. Anything to help you to understand this stuff better um, because that's really the truth about it. That's the only way it works. And anybody else says something else, they're not going by the Bible. Now, Philippians 3, uh, chapter 3, verses 8 through 16. I was going to get you all to read your Bibles. That would have made it maybe a little longer. But you're probably probably right. But it would be nice the next time you all bring your Bibles. That would be great. I, what is more, and I consider everything a loss because of the what? Anybody know? Uh -uh. The surpassing worth of knowledge. Okay? Christ Jesus my Lord for whose sake that I have lost all things, meaning all things of this world is gone. That's what it's saying there. Remember we were talking about that earlier. I consider them garbage now. So all the world that what it has to offer is garbage, because it is. Because what you have for God is going to be something that's a lot more than what this world could ever give. All right, so when I may gain Christ Jesus and also be found in him, not having, a, not having a righteousness of my own, meaning man-made works, but God's works, you know, spiritual works that are in me, and the faith also as is a witness of it, uh, the fruits of the Spirit, all that, uh, Beatitudes, you know, Matthew 7, uh, 5 verses seven, uh, 1 through 9, that's the Beatitudes of your spirit that shows God, the Holy Spirit's in you, that comes from of the law, that's what we're talking about, the man-made laws and rituals, you know, that the goes the, you know, religion rituals, which aren't in the Bible, that people follow, you know, the many convictions and traditions that they have, that's what we're talking about there, they're not always biblical, um, uh, but that which is brought faith in Christ Jesus, all right, the righteousness that comes from God, ultimately, on the very basis from, our, from having faith in him says, I want to know Jesus Christ. Yes, to know him and know of the power of his resurrection and also, is, and also be in participation in his suffering, which you will be, because you will suffer things as being a Christian. It's not going to be easy. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people I see in news groups today picture Jesus as this buddy-buddy guy and he's all your friend and he is all that. But there's a lot of things that you've got to do to sacrifice to get to that point. And that's what you've got to understand, folks, in the life and ministry of Jesus. You've got to get that. 
You know, it's not that he's this cool guy, hey, and everything's fine, and I'm carefree like a lot of te teachers and youth ministers teach today. It's a lot more than just that. It's also suffering. It's also steadfastness. It's also having faith and commitment and devotion to God. Okay? So it's all those things. But it's not just that he's your friend. He's also there to help you. He's there to intercede on your prayers. He's there to talk on your behalf when you can't utter the words out of your mouth. That's what Jesus does. Okay? So becoming like Jesus, not being like Jesus. Like some people think they become really like Jesus. No. The goal is to become like Jesus. You'll never be Jesus, but to be like that through your actions is what the Beatitudes are. And that's, you know, to live as close as you can, but you're not going to be like Jesus. And no one will. Only Jesus can be Jesus because he's God. He's perfect. We are not right now. One day we will be pure, though, but right now we're not. All right. So somehow, all right, now attaining to uh, the resurrection of Christ from the dead, we will once be raised too, just like Jesus was. Okay. Number 12. Not that I have already obtained all these things, but nor have I already arrived at any of these goals yet. Okay. Because it's true. We haven't, I haven't got, have you got, we haven't got there yet, have we? All right, but I will still press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. Now also, I urge you, brothers and sisters of the faith, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it yet. Remember, he just said it again to reinforce it, because nobody has it. We, I haven't yet. I'm trying to go towards it, but once we go to God and we judge, we will have it. But right, that's our goal. That's what he's telling us. That's that's at the end of the tunnel. It says, if you're a believer. I say, so it says, one thing that I do is I is forgetting what is behind me. I always want to remember the past. And God is always telling us to do what? Forget what is what? Behind me. Wake up. Behind me. Okay? And strive and strain towards what lies ahead. The future. Because that's where the progress is. Not worrying about what I did in the past with Susie Koo or what I did at work or the bad decisions I made to reject because that will not help you in the Lord. Okay, So I press on towards the very goal to win that prize of eternal life, that crown that we're supposed to get that the Lord promises us in Acts 2.39. Okay? And then also it talks about uh, God has called me to heavenward. You know, not on this earth. We're just passing through. Remember, we're just passing through this thing. It's temporary here. But we're, our goal is to be heavenly bound in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that's basically what we read here this morning. And now I've got, I got a few things we're going to read and we're going to do communion. We're finished. Okay, and those kids are getting ready to explode at the seams here. But sorry about that. We went a little long today. But make right choices, folks, when it comes to things in your life. Because you need to be adapt at these decision making when you're making these decisions you know when it comes to that process you need to be adapt know what you're doing think it through plan it and have a goal in mind always keep a goal you know first and foremost decide to serve god first before you do any of these other things okay and then make all choices with him and also his will in mind remember the instructions we were talking about stop playing with your underwear Okay, I don't want to hear popping and things. Okay, do that. well I hear popping. I don't want. I don't want you doing snapping shorts. Whatever you're doing. No. Okay. Why not? Now listen. Why not be now? Make now you want to set an example. Why not be an example for people? Set an example for people, and make the choice now. Meaning, I know you can't get baptized today, but when you're ready to be baptized, kids. When I wrote this sermon originally, I this is a call a benediction, and you could get baptized. That's basically what that was. But the thing is, when you're ready to do that, then you will make that call. But think about this. Again. So what I said right there is very serious. And anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the sermon. And sorry we were a little long today, but I think I need to do this for the kids so they can understand things a little better of what the Bible actually says and about the real mechanics that are in the Bible and how God does work and uh, not all this hoopla of all you know, these other things that are being said out here that are causing confusion and not or founded on God's spot on the scriptures um, and know exactly what it is saying because I think it's so important paramount that these kids know you for who you really are and that God you come to them when they call out to you 
You call them, call you by their name and know that who you are and know that you love them and that they will pay attention when I'm preaching and not be wandering and moving around and tuning me out. And uh, because when I go to their house, I don't do that when their dad says stuff that I don't agree with, but I still love him and I still love the kids. But, you know, I hope that they give me the same respect in return. And thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. And Jesus, we pray, man. Now, let's go to communion, because I see that's what's going on. Um, let's look at communion here. And, of course, your children, too. You're going to wander. I mean, it's almost an hour. For Pete's sake, sorry about that. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about the communion. All right, we have the bread, which represents the present of God, his flesh, symbolically. Not really literally like the Catholics. Oh, we're going to take the real skin of Jesus and eat it up? No. This is a symbolic of him being present with us. So let's think about that today as we partake this. As the disciples broke the bread and passed it around, Jesus partook it. Let's partake. And also his blood was shed on the cross. That's what the grape juice represents. Um, and that shows that he died for us so that we could have eternal life to be with him, as it tells us in Acts 2.39. And also that he bled on the cross so that our sins would be forgiven. And that's what this represents. So let's think about this as the cup is passed around. If you're not a Christian, you cannot partake communion. I mean, you're not baptized. I'm not talking about sprinkled or Christian, but baptized according to the way it's outlined in the Bible, like when John the Baptist baptized Jesus. That's the way we all need to be baptized. No other way. If you're baptized in any other way, it's not of Jesus. Okay, so being dunked on the water is the only way. That is certifiable according to Jesus and God that he'll accept. So let's, with that in mind, let's protect. Hey Lord, thank you for all the time we had to spend together. And we learned some messages today. We had some good times. I had to yell a little bit. I don't like to do that, but I want to make sure these kids get the point as well as everybody out here. There's so many things being taught that are not scriptural today. And it just rocks me to the core in my heart to hear people saying things that they know better not even to say because it's not supported in your word. And yet they still say it anyway. And it sounds so, it's awful because they're doing a disservice to God and they're even doing, they're also causing punishment on themselves as I was reading last night. And when you say things that aren't scriptural, you actually can be punished for that because that's incorrect worship to God when you're quoting things that are out of context. So it's important to Follow what the Bible does teach and what your word says because your word always wins in the end. Because you are the champion of life, eternal life, and of salvation. And thank you, Lord. These are the kids. i got somebody standing over here. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, Shields came here today. They're kids. I don't know what they were popping a few minutes ago, but it was pretty funny. But, uh, Lord, thank you for everything. And Jesus may permit. These are the kids. Uh, come, come and join us. Bye. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Take care. God bless. <laughs>